Thank you for the invitation to this, I think, really, really important um, first global summit on war and cancer. Um, I'm honored um, to speak on behalf of the Safer Ukraine Collaborative about how to address the needs of pediatric oncology patients in new maintained settings and talk and share the experience of the Safer Ukraine initiative. Um, today, I would like to map out the implementation process of the Safer Ukraine evacuation effort established to address the needs of Ukrainian patients affected by war. I would like to illustrate the transformation from emergency phase to a sustainable humanitarian response. And I'm going to highlight unique elements of the Safer Ukraine evacuation pathway um, at the end of my talk. On February 24th, 2022, um, Russia started its invasion of Ukraine and the war in Ukraine intensified. This date marks the beginning of the biggest humanitarian crisis in Europe since the end of the World War II. More than 7 million people were forced to leave their home country um, and more than 17 million people are in need to, due to the ongoing war activities. Prior to the Russian invasion, the burden of childhood cancer <clears throat> was substantial in Ukraine with over 1,000 new diagnoses per year. Before February 2022, over 30 healthcare facilities provided PHO care with a total capacity of 855 beds. As observed in previous armed conflicts, healthcare facilities became um, targets for strategic attacks. Today, December 13th, more than 1,400 direct attacks on healthcare um, facilities were <clears throat> collected by the WHO. As you can see, um, uh, or as this map highlights, all major pediatric oncology uh, centers were affected either directly or indirectly by such kind of attacks. And all crucial aspects of patient-centered cancer care are affected by the war-related distribution to healthcare infrastructure. With, um, I think, the whole story about the Safer Ukraine initiative cannot be told without highlighting um, that this evacuation effort wouldn't have been possible um, without special political circumstances. As a reaction to the Russian invasion, the European Union decided on unique political actions, which among other things, guarantee free access to healthcare for all Ukrainian citizens forced to leave their home country. On March 4th, 2022, the European Union adopts the so-called temporary protection mechanism for persons leaving Ukraine. And these special um, temporary protection mechanism included rights which ensured <clears throat> residents access to the labor market and housing, healthcare coverage, and access to education for children. On March 10th, 2022, the so-called Versailles Declaration um, was decided in which all European Union member states decided to continue to providing coordinated political, financial, material, medical, and humanitarian support. And on March 15th, the European Union House Ministers guaranteed right to healthcare access. With modern therapeutic approaches and supportive care, we are able to cure almost 80% of children with cancer in high-income countries. However, this treatment is heavily dependent on the various resources and its efficiency requires precise timing of drug administration. That's why pediatric cancer patients belong to the most vulnerable groups in armed conflicts and human chance settings. To address the needs of pediatric hematology oncology patients affected by the war in Ukraine, the so-called support and action for emergency response safer in Ukraine collaborative launched in February 2022. The mission is to address the needs of pediatric hematology oncology patients affected by war. Um, and the initiative is led. Um, by the Polish Society for Pediatric Oncology and Hematology and Sanctuary Global. 
Due to the uncertain access to oncological care, the Safer Ukraine um, Initiative established an international referral network of country coordinators to facilitate timely patient transfer by identifying local hospital capacity and required expertise. To date, more than 200 organizations from more than 15 countries stepped in to support the initiative and all together we were able to assist more than 1,500 patients and their families by getting evacuated from Ukraine. With that said, I would like to use the next few slides to guide you through the Safer Ukraine referral pathway. Doing so, um, I would like to focus um, mainly um, on the unique steps and elements we established to provide the safest possible referral pathway for this highly vulnerable patient cohort. The first step, as you can see highlighted here, of the evacuation um, is the patient identification and selection by local partners with pediatric oncology expertise in Ukraine. Physicians or families can reach out and address the evacuation request either to the team from the Western Ukraine Specialized <clears throat> Children's Medical Center in Lviv or to the biggest childhood cancer foundation, Tabletochki, and those teams will then facilitate the evacuation request. To facilitate the, ident <clears throat> the identification of patients in need um, of evacuation um, based on their therapeutic needs and treatment capacity in Ukraine, um, we developed evacuation guidelines together with the Ukrainian uh, Ministry of Health and the three um, biggest um, pediatric oncology centers in Lviv in Kiev. These evacuation guidelines were published by the Ukrainian Ministry of Health and became applicable for all pediatric oncology centers. With the crucial support of SIAP Europe, um, we established an international referral network of country coordinators with pediatric oncology expertise to facilitate the timely transfer of patients by identifying local hospital capacity um, and required medical expertise. To ensure a safe and, um, referral and prevent deterioration of patients during the allocation, we implemented a so-called two-step medical triage system. After identification of patients in Ukraine, these are transported um, to Lviv, where the medical team of the Western Ukraine Specialized Children's Medical Center um, provides the first medical triage. Based on this first medical assessment, the further referral process is planned and patients are transported either directly to a Polish hospital or to a dedicated, safer Ukraine triage hub in Poland. To enable a second medical triage, we established a dedicated triage hub in Poland. This triage facility provides lodging and clinical assessment of patients to ensure an efficient and safe patient referral. For that, we choose or we were happy to find a large hotel in the Polish countryside and transformed it into a triage hub, which opened already on March 4th in 2022. In this triage hub, we accepted stable patients with the aim of evacuation to referral in less than 48 hours, again, to prevent clinical deterioration during the referral process. Patients that increase risk for clinical deterioration or in need of immediate medical care, for example, chemotherapy, were directly transported to pediatric oncology and hematology centers in Poland. Um, an international team <clears throat> out of physicians, nurses, family experts, and local volunteers provided on-site support to patients and families in the triage hub. To ensure patient <clears throat> safety and due to rotating staff and volunteers, we standardized the triage process as illustrated on this graphic. Most children assessed at the triage hub arrived through humanitarian convoys um, on arrival, each patient um, was assessed by a physician and a nurse um, concerning clinical findings, for example, fever, neutropenia, zanlad, 
to a direct referral to the local pediatric oncology department. In the first six months of emergency response, 414 patients and their families received on-site support at the so-called Unicorn Safer Ukraine triage hub, inclusive of patients with cancer, blood disorders, and a few patients with other chronic disease. Most of the patients arrived by convoy. In total, we were able to facilitate 20 human convoys to 14 European and North American countries in the first six months. Uh, six months. Only 10, meaning 2%, of patients needed secondary referral to a Polish hospital due to clinical decompensation after um, the triage. This again highlights um, the efficiency, but also importance for the first medical triage happening in um, Lviv. Um, we are excited to, to be able to share our experience in the most current um, issue of Lancet Oncology. So please feel free to read more about the establishment of our um, triage process. And because this publication is not available publicly, also feel free to reach out to me to get access to the PDF version. After the first few months of the emergency response, we explored um, options and possibilities to transform the initiative into a sustainable humanitarian response. This is how we became aware of the so-called, of the efforts of the so-called Emergency Response Coordinating Center, short ESCC, of the European Union. Um, ESCC is the heart of the European Union Civil Protection Mechanism and coordinates medical evacuation of Ukraine patients in urgent need of treatment out of Ukraine to the European Union member state. Doing so, ESCC opened its own um, evacuation hub in Jashov, Poland, close to the Ukrainian border in September 2022. The hub is run by a so-called Taiwan Emergency Medical Team, the Polish Center of, uh, for International Aid, short PCPA. This flowchart gives you an overview about the ESCC evacuation pathway, and I just want to highlight a few unique elements. Patient identification and selection is facilitated not by an organization, um, but by the Ukraine Ministry of Health itself. The patient referral um, is organized through a dedicated referral platform called CESIS, to which all European Union member states and associated states have access. And patient outbound is provided either through the hub in Jashov or directly with other partners facilitating the patient transportation. To explore possibilities of collaboration, we had a first strategic meeting with PCPM at the Maribach Hub, um, Yasionka, in November 2022. During this meeting, we decided on a joint goal to harmonize both evacuation efforts to sustain a collaborative, effective, long-term humanitarian response and deliver safe and timely medical treatment to pediatric hematology oncology patients from Ukraine. To facilitate an effective um, collaboration, we conducted a um, retrospective study and evaluated the referral pathways of both evacuation efforts to explore opportunities to harmonize um, um, the, both efforts for pediatric oncology patients. For this study, we analyzed the evacuation numbers of both efforts in the first 10 months of the, uh, after the start of the war, meaning from February 24th to December 24th, 2022. During the, that time, the ESCC facilitated a total of 1,438 um, evacuations, 940 military patients, and 489 civilian patients through 16 um, different countries in Europe. The median age of patients was 36, and the largest patient group by far were patients with trauma, <clears throat> trauma injuries, followed by oncological patients. This can be explained by the fact um, that this evacuation effort was developed initially for wounded soldiers. These data also indicate um, that the government, uh, governmental effort lacks capacity 
um, for pediatric patients, in particular with chronic disease. During the first 10 months of emergency response, Safer Ukraine was able to facilitate a total of 550 evacuations um, um, to 14 countries in Europe and North America. The median age of patients was nine, um, and most of them suffered from an oncological disease. With regard to the key milestones of both evacuation efforts, it, became, it becomes obvious that the Safer Ukraine collaboration was quite fast in establishing its humanitarian response. Already on March 4th, we were able to open the triage hub in Bohemians, and the first 200 completed evacuation facilitated on March 7th. In comparison, um, the ESCC completed the first 200 evacuation on May 13th. I emphasize this because we are convinced that oncological patients in crisis areas are dependent on fast humanitarian actions due to their vulnerability and treatment needs. As key findings of our study, we were able to identify differences in the network of allocation countries. And we assume that a joint evacuation effort will build capacity to admit pediatric oncology patients for continuation of treatment. In addition, we, <clears throat> we showed difference in the speed at which both evacuation efforts were initiated. And we believe that the implementation of a collaboration could increase the speed for future evacuation efforts. And third, we mapped out the different composition of the patient cohorts and we are convinced that a joint evacuation effort could build capacity for the care of pediatric patients with chronic and catastrophic disease. Due to the findings of this study, um, we outlined the benefits of a joint effort and met for a second strategic meeting with the ESCC leadership team in Brussels in February 2023. During this media meeting, we decided on a joint um, evacuation effort and use the next few months to develop standard operating uh, procedure and joint communication pathways. Um, with the help of the Polish Society for Pediatric Oncology, we were also able to um, give medical trainings to the PCPM team at the Medivac Hub in Yosjanka and um, tell them more and educate them in the um, care for kids with cancer. Um, we conducted a few other meetings uh, among them. We were able to invite the leadership team of the local pediatric hospital to the hub um, and establish a good pathway um, in case we need um, referral um, for patients with deterioration during their stay in the hub. And last but not least, we were happy to be able to facilitate the first joint evacuation of three patients to Utrecht, Netherlands, through the, this joint evacuation pathway on September 11th this year. With that, I would like to come to the end of my talk and again highlight what are the unique elements of the Safer Ukraine evacuation effort. First, these are the characteristics of patient population as I mapped out in the beginning. Pediatric oncology patients are a highly vulnerable patient cohort in need of timely treatment. That's why evacuation effort can be such effective. Second, it's the geopolitical context. As I highlighted in the beginning, the evacuation effort would have not been possible without um, guaranteed access to healthcare for free in the European Union. And third, we learned the importance of pre-war collaborations meaning we were happy to be able to loop in uh, and get the support of more than 200 organizations um, due to pre-war established collaborations in the pediatric oncology community. With that, I will, would like to say that unique element, these unique elements may not be generalizable to all conflict setting and patient populations. However, we believe that it's crucial to raise awareness on the need of joint efforts focusing on children suffering from chronic and catastrophic disease and neumating crisis, and all together to in, 
um, to, to make their care better. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and, of course, the whole Safer Ukraine Collaborative, um, because this is definitely a team effort. And um, if you have any further questions or would like to get engaged, please feel free to reach out to me or our team. Thank you.